This is Raina Creole with Purpose and Passion. It's all about educating, empowering, inspiring, teaching awareness through our guest stories. So today I'm so excited because I get to re-interview and a little bit about the re-interview for those that don't know that I used to have a show called Straight from the Streets and I had the opportunity to interview this lovely amazing woman I always think about spiritual awakenings I think about things that are just not considered like normal right that people are like just stuck in this box you know and so I'm just so excited now that I revamp my show to purpose and passion with Lux Media that I have this opportunity to re-interview Angie Rojo and you can find her on social media and on her IG inspired with Angie her title is Quantum Healing Hypnosis Practitioner and Self Love Mentor. <laughs> Thank you, Angie, for being here today. I'm excited to do this again. It's been <laughs> two years, right, since our last connection. Yes. A lot's happened since. Yes. I'm excited to talk about all of that. <laughs> So let the viewers know a little bit about your background, you know, kind of like a small autobiography. Oh, my goodness. Uh, So I've always been in the spiritual space. Um, I grew up knowing, becoming fully aware, or I guess being born fully aware of my angels, my spirit guides. Um, I grew up, my parents are, you know, young teenage parents. My dad was 16. My mom was 17 when they had me both from East LA. Um, So I grew up in that environment, uh, having the awareness of my guides, my, my spirit team all around me, I say were the biggest influence in who I am today. Um, So I just always have had that awareness. I almost became a nun um, in high school. I don't know if I shared that with you before, but um, I had an encounter with the priest that was a gift from God because I turned everything the other way. Um, Excuse me. I then um, was a practice Buddhism, was a uh, priestess in a religion. A lot of people in the U.S. call it or is known as Santeria, daughter Mm -hmm. of Oshun. Um, Got out of that paradigm, was in it for seven years, experienced a very manipulative paradigm. That was my personal experience in that um, culture, specifically that temple, Uh, and then became a quantum healing hypnosis practitioner. So all my life, again, I've been super aware of this lifetime, life on other, you know, past lives, other dimensions, realms, um, again, connected to spirit guides, angels, and um, God. And so just knowing all of that um, has given me so much wisdom and understanding as to my life's purpose and has helped me guide other people discover their own life's purpose, uh, despite what they were born into or their struggles or any, you know, sort of life experiences that they, that they have had. Um, so that's, I guess, a little mini bio <laughs> of yeah, life a, to this point. Point, but that's it's a good by a uh, mini bio because you touched up on a lot of things, you know, and just reflecting back, um, you know, especially for the Latino culture, I wanted to for you to kind of share, uh, kind of like a uh, an experience of when you knew when you were a part of the Santeria, why it wasn't for you, because a lot mm-hmm. of people try to hide from it or be scared of it, and it's just. It's just like any other faith base because everybody's faith base is different. You know what I mean? And so I wanted to, to ask you, like, when it came to the Santeria part, like, when did the shift change for you? You know, it was a series of events. There were a couple of um, things that happened. I knew I started to. So I think uh, when you're in that kind of culture where you're constantly having readings and being told what to do, what not to do, who's good for you, who's not good, you know, who's the enemy, who's not the enemy, (laughs) um, you rely on, you become dependent. And so you're easily um, manipulated. Now I stepped into an awareness of, I want to see things for myself versus being told what to do, what not to do. So with that intention in mind, I started to have a revelation of series of events happening. You know, one person would say something and the other person would reveal like the truth 
what really mm -hmm. happened. Um, and it was just like event after event. Um, I had a guy who wanted to date me who uh, was kind of crazy, not kind of crazy. He was crazy. He was crazy. And then, <laughs> he, yeah, he was crazy. He was so crazy that he actually, you know, those people that kind of like tell, the, tell on themselves, like they have a big mouth, they tell on themselves. Yes. So, so it turns out that this guy was going to my own godparents to do love spells on me and whatnot. And mm -hmm. I was really shocked because I was like, wait a minute, these are people that's supposed to, that are supposed to have my back and you know, like what is going on turns out this guy was paying them a lot of money to do this stuff and so of course when you mix love and money he started going a little bit more cray cray right so yes. here i am <laughs> here i am trying to get a restraining order on this guy um while learning many things about my own temple the, the people that i was under um and again just revelation out of, after revelation seeing things for myself um you know from them telling people within my temple to, to disrespect me, to, to treat me as if I'm nothing, um, mm -hmm. and to work me to the bone. I mean, I, I work the religion 24 seven people who are in it would, would know what it's like. But, um, I think there was a moment where I was, it almost felt like the curtains were lifted, like the veil was lifted mm -hmm. and I wasn't afraid. Cause as you said, like people are afraid. Um, I prior to that moment was very afraid of leaving. I was afraid of them doing, you know, black magic on me of creating mm -hmm. spells of sending those muertos and so on and so forth um, yes. but i had extreme divine faith in god um again connected back to my angels my my guides my ancestors my my dad passed away when i was eight so connecting to him from a different awareness mm -hmm. um and just having faith that as as soon as i stepped away i was going to be okay and that was a big spiritual battle as well too because um, just like when you leave any sort of, you know, even a, a toxic relationship, you know, am I going to be okay? Do I need the person, you know? And that, that was one of the things that they told me was, um, mm -hmm. are you sure you're going to leave? Because, uh, if you leave, the world's going to eat you alive. That was, that was one of the scare tactics that, you know, I got, and then I got death threats and whatnot, but just my faith and in, in God and honestly, my faith in what love really felt like what love really was when someone really cares about you, when you feel safe, when you feel whole, when you can be yourself, when you're respected, that's truly what I leaned into. And that's what, what saved me. Oh my God, Angie, thank you for just being an open book, because like I said, a lot of people are scared to touch on this, on this topic. Um, you know, in, in the Mexican culture, you had, you know, family members, you know, I'm talking about, you know, family, you know, family members that, um, you know, that were like, you know, Creoles that were, you know, into voodoo and, and being Catholic, you know, mm -hmm. using both, or then with the Mexican culture, being Catholic and using the Santeria both, you know, and I always tell people, the only reason why, like with certain topics of Santeria is it's considered fear is because, like you said, some people manipulate good people and, the things that are guiding them, the deities or whatever they're working with are demonic. You know what I mean? Um, and so like, you shouldn't have to put fear in somebody when they, when they've been revealed, you know what I mean? You know, I always say what's in the dark comes to light. And um, so I'm just, I'm just really, really happy that you were able to, to share that because that is a deep personal, you know, topic for a lot of people and you're sharing your truth to us, you know, especially to the viewers, a lot of people are like, Oh my God, like, how does she get mm -hmm. out of that? You know, like mm -hmm. you said, it's, you know, you, you put, you know, God first and, and you know, that with that love and, you know, understanding that, um, that he's going to pull for you, you know what I mean? And I just think that's really beautiful just to see your story of being fearless because that's what it is. You know, you're, you're fearless. There's no more fear. And I always tell the youth out there when I'm working with at-risk youth, I'm like, fear is false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. So once you guys recognize that, then you can push through anything, you know? And so I'm really, you know, I'm really, really, I, I love that about you, that you're an open book, you know, on, on those topics that are considered touchy to other people. But, you know, this is purpose and passion. And without purpose, you know, we wouldn't be able to experience life, right? You know, to find our purpose. And so uh, take us to the quantum healing hypnosis uh, practitioner um, 
part because it's probably new to some people, you know, it was new to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. And I wanted to go back quickly because, um, you know, I feel like with everything, there is a, a vibrational frequency to everything. Right. So you met, you touched on like demonic energies and whatnot. And I feel like, you know, these deities do have the lower vibrational energies that can be used, you know, to hurt other people and whatnot. But then there's also a a different paradigm, like a, a a flip side, right? Like a higher vibrational energy. Um, And I think that's, that's where it all came full circle for me was leaving the religion uh, because I am crown daughter of Oshun in the religion. I, I, I am, you know, uh, I commune with this energy daily now, but it's from a different side of, of vibrational knowing, love, you know, um, femininity, connectedness, um, just really connected to that divine feminine. But um, when I left, I started to, I, I wanted nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with being seen as a religious <laughs> leader, as a spiritual anything. Like I did not want to look at priests or or pastors or anything i was like they're all fake they're all you know Mm -hmm. i had my own belief system that i had to work through and heal myself um so that took years that took about three years there was a moment where um i started to have astral projection experiences have you ever had anything like that where you like leave your body at night and you start traveling to other realms you know what i only had one experience only one time but i wasn't asleep i was actually awake and I was, oh my God, this person, like, I can't say his name, but he, he, he experienced it with me. And, um, just to give a little bit of piggyback, cause I know you're going to share your story. So I was not sleeping. Um, this young man that I knew he was an acquaintance, he was in a police, uh, pursuit. He was a, a gang member at the time and he crashed and he died in this accident. And when I walked up in the home, the big brother, you know, gave me a hug and we start talking. And then he asked me, Raina, is my brother still here? I said, yes, he is. He's still here in this home. I can feel him in his room. And he's all like, well, go to the room. So for the first time, I opened, you know, my vessel spiritually, you know, I laid on his bed and I literally levitated. And after that, I just remember, I just remember, I don't even remember walking out of his room. I just remember sitting next to his brother and telling him things that I didn't know only the brother would know. Like, I felt like the brother was in me and I was able to communicate with his brother and his brother got freaked out and was calling me a bruja. And I was like, no, I believe in God. You know, I'm a Christian, but these are gifts that I've had since I was a child. I was five or six seeing the other side, you know, like dead people and crazy things. And, and so when we communicated, that was the weirdest experience, you know, being awake and levitating and then something jumping inside of me to communicate with his brother, you know, like mm. so that was the closest experience I've ever had, you know, and I would never do it again. Cause I was not prepared for that. I was not, I did I have no idea <laughs> what I was doing, but it happened, Angie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it sounds like it's something that, you know, it's probably a natural ability of yours to be able to channel those other uh, beings that have passed over and want to communicate with their loved ones. Um, but yeah, astral projection is also when you um, visit other worlds, visit other lifetimes, have the awareness that you're traveling through time and space and, um, you know, just get gaining wisdom and awareness. I, um, I was it's funny you mentioned your story because I had very similar experiences except man yeah you have to get a hold of what you're doing for anyone listening like you you have to know what you're doing get get yourself a mentor because you can get into a lot of trouble if you just go for it yeah that's because it sounds fascinating right like the whole experience what you just shared sounds like yeah I'm sure people are like tell us more after it was scary, like what the heck just happened? What just happened? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's called channeling. Um, so I remember one night going to bed and thinking to myself, wow, I'm so blessed. I'm so lucky. Um, you know, why, why, how is this given the background, given where I come from this, the life I have is not 
what is not the statistic, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember that night I was taken my, I felt my spirit come out of my body, like literally go through the ceiling of my room, travel to another lifetime in China. And I came across a woman who was, she had no, she, her legs were amputated. So she was walking on her knees pretty much. It was like right above the knee. She was walking. She was in a, like apartment, like a, a province or a village. It was dirt road. And as I looked at her, I knew she was me. I knew this was a version of me. This was an aspect of me. And I knew that while I was quote unquote lucky, that's, mm -hmm. that was what I thought myself the night before. There was another aspect of me that had different, a different life path, a different, so it's almost like a yin and a yang of balance to consciousness. Yeah. Like while you're experiencing uh, happiness, another aspect of you is also experiencing tragedy, let's just say. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like expanded my awareness. And it was one of those experiences where it was like so real that you're like, what was that? You know, what was that? And I had had many experiences like that as a kid, it's just now I'm, you know, in my late twenties and you're a logically woman. thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I started to Google like YouTube, right? What is time travel? What are angels? Cause I've always seen angels, but I've never Googled it. I've never looked up. Like, am I the only one? Do other people see <laughs> angels? So I went down the YouTube rabbit hole. I came across a woman named Dolores Cannon, who is just a beautiful grandma lady. You would imagine knitting on her chair in front of the TV. And she's talking about um, life on other planets, life on other dimensions. She's talking about aliens. She's talking about time travel, like She's talking about how people, all these souls volunteer to come on earth to help humanity, to raise the vibration of the earth. Wow. Um, I mean, on and on and on. She's got hours and hours of content on YouTube. And I uh, booked a session with a man. Of course, I had a million questions, you know, coming from my, from the Santeria paradigm, you know, from why did this happen? Why was this in my path to mm -hmm. so many things? Um, so I myself had my my very own quantum healing hypnosis session in which I was able to see and feel and, you know, see different lifetimes, um, connect with higher self, connect with Oshun energy. I had to reconnect with her energy as well. Cause I felt like I had turned my back. And in a sense, I turned my back to that paradigm, to that being manipulated and gain my own power. Um, but through that experience, I felt so um, aware and so connected because prior to that, it was people telling me what my guides were, what my guardians were. And I, what my dad, for example, you know, what my dad would want me to do, like guide me to do, oh, your dad loves you or your dad wants you to do this. Um, and now that I was seeing it myself, I just felt so connected to the spirit world to my own awareness. Um, and then I refused to become a practitioner. Of course, I was, I came from this paradigm. I don't want to be seen as anything like that. Like, no, no, no. Um, but I just felt the nudge, the nudge, nudge, you know, sometimes when you feel like you'll never do that as like the one thing you end up doing, <laughs> <They're> never, <laughs> never say never. Um, but then I became a practitioner. So that was six years ago. So quantum healing hypnosis is, is becoming aware of, you know, your life patterns, um, healing, you know, things from childhood coming to terms to why it happened, why it was, so we come from the school of thought. I come from the school of thought that everything is working in your favor. Everything is working to yeah. expand your consciousness, to open your heart, um, to be, to lean more into your purpose. And, um, that's what people experience during a session. They experience expansion. They experience that those, uh, puzzle pieces, going into place and understanding like, Oh, that's why I like, you know, I'm thinking, uh, that's why I like this hobby you're hiking or whatever, because I connect more with nature or because I'm getting grounded or, you know, um, so all the, like everything makes sense. That, I like that because you know, it's weird if I've always asked myself this, um, I have a story behind it, um, which was very, um, enlightening for me, you know, I, for some odd reason, I feel connected to the ocean, right? To the ocean, putting my feet in the sand, talking to God. Like, I just feel like he's there. I can't see him, but I just think he's in the clouds, you know? And so one day I um, went to Paula's Verdes and 
I was trying to, you know, do my workout, whatever. And then I told my personal trainer, I said, just wait for me up there. I'm going to go down. And she was like, okay, you know, be safe because you can't go over there because it says the sign you can't go over there. But something was calling me there. And I started to walk closer and closer and finally get to the location. And, you know, uh, for me as a Christian, baptism means everything for me, right? You know, it just means cleansing or whatever, right? And so I sit down and this is a true story, okay? I said, God, I'm sitting on these rocks. The water could probably take me away if it wanted to, right? But it wasn't high waters yet, okay? And so I'm talking to God. I said, God, you know what? I was in the shower. I was washing my hair. And you showed me 200 million, 200 million, like the lotto signs. I said, so am I going to win the lotto? And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, I don't know what's happening, but I just wanted to have this conversation with you because if you're going to give me $400 million, I need to be prepared. (laughs) And I'm just having this conversation with him. And I said, just give me a sign, you know, and I truly believe in angels. I know they're real because God created them. And all of a sudden this water came and it, it didn't take me, but it, it, it was for me symbolic, like baptism, you know, and the water flew on me The I could hear my trainer from up the hill, like, right, are you okay? And I'm holding on to these rocks. And as the water went away, it slowed down the tide. And then I still have it below was a turquoise stone and all the other side was a pearl shell. And so I had to really look at that. I was like, oh, this is this. I'm going to make it into a, 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 a chain. I'm going to make it into a chain. It's got to find somebody to, to make it like this on my, on my chain. And so I end up going like Googling and I forgot the title, but the Native Americans they call it something and I'm gonna have to send it to you because I, I can't remember right now. Um, but it was saying something about like those individuals are people that are meant to make the world better. Mm -hmm. And everything that I do working with these at risk youth, living the life that I lived and, you know, my parents, I'm not dead or in prison, you know, And all I want to do is help people. Somebody told me your purpose is to mentorship, which I can see that, but I want to do it on a bigger scale because I've done gang intervention for 20 plus years giving, but I'm not growing because I'm just stuck, right? I'm just at the same place. And I want to grow because I feel like, you know, one day my time will be up on this earth physically. So I end up saying, I'm going to follow my 15 year old dream. You know, as a 15 year old teenager, I was like, I'm going to be mayor. And that followed me. And now here I am in 2021. I'm officially running for mayor of Inglewood in 2022 next year, you know? So it's like, ah, oh, that was so symbolic about being next to the water, seeing what I found. And m- maybe for sure next year, meeting with you to, to, f- to put all of this together, you know what I mean? Like put it together and to understand more, you know, understand myself more because obviously you do the hypnosis and everything like that. And you have this gift. I, and, I, and I know you have this gift because it started when you was a child, you know? So it's definitely a gift that God gave you. And I, I truly want to explore what are all these things in my life, you know? Um, and just be satisfied with everything, whether it's bad or good, you know what I mean? And just keep pushing on because obviously in 2022, next year, um, they vote for me in November 4th of 2022. Then after that, it's 2023. And I want to be ready, you know, like, you know, those dogs that have those things <laughs> from the doctor. I just want one of those just to just go ahead, full force, you know, nothing stopping me. <laughs> I felt, I imagined a horse with like blinders on, like your focus, <laughs> like, like a stallion with blinders on and you're just head on, you know, just like no distractions. I know why I'm here. I know why I'm doing this. Yes. You know, it's really interesting that you're putting those pieces together yourself because what I've learned throughout my practice and and everything, all the encounters I've had, the dreams I've had where they're, they're like, go tell this person this, you know, I've had 
people's past grandmothers and Mm -hmm. sisters and brothers come to my dreams to, to give me a message to deliver to someone. And in, in those messages, and even in my sessions, people's own awarenesses, we have a big purpose on this planet. I believe we have a powerful mission to fulfill. And I believe it's already fulfilled. I believe that in, in some timeline, it, it, if you can see it, it's already happened. Mm. And so I think that as humans, we tend to dumb that down or pretend that we don't know when deep down inside, we really know how powerful we are and what a great mission we're on, you know? And I think that it's time to start owning that. It's time to really start owning that as individuals you know, the visions that you have, it's because there are possibilities and potentials that you can and you will fulfill. Um, and it's not about you. It's not about us, right? It's about yes. the impact and the ripple effects for yeah. humanity. It's yeah. not, you know, yes, it's the youth, but it's beyond the youth. So I think in a sense, we limit ourselves by, by not allowing us to see the bigger picture. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and so I agree. Yeah. And so I think, that's the one thing that has really come to light uh, to my awareness lately is how significant our work is. And I, I'm saying our, like from being a good mother to yeah. being a good sister to being a, and when I say good, I mean some with integrity, with love, yes, with, with purpose, love integrity, with, yes. you know, um, wherever it is, if it's even, giving someone a smile or, or, you know, sometimes like there are people in the world that are in their own shadows and their darkness. And, um, you know, we can't let that graze us. We can't let that interfere with, with our purpose. And like you said, that's dallying with the blinders on focus <laughs> and knowing what they have to do. Like in a sense, we've got to be leaders and just, just go, you know, just do yeah. it. And talking about leadership, you have a new role in leadership in motherhood. So share that. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love seeing the whole journey on IG. I was like, oh my God, Angie's got married. She's a mom. Oh my gosh, how beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I my daughter is what 15 months now. And um it's that was a whole oh experience of its own because we so as a kid up until the point I was pregnant I was very much connected to my angels my guides you know the cosmos god I wanted to be with any Raina anytime I drank like when I would drink and get super drunk I didn't want to be on this planet anymore I was like this is hard I don't want to be here Mm -hmm. I want to be there I'm I'm always been I've always been there this is hard and it wasn't until I got pregnant that I realized how important life is and how important this body is. Um, And like, I just was never that connected to the human experience. You know, I was very like, "Ah, things happen. And, you know, I honestly, I was eight years old. My dad passed away and I was like, it was his time. It was his time. Like I, he's there. He's just not here physically, but he's there. So I was always very aware, but I was never, I didn't know what it felt like honestly, to be human, to be in my body. Um, so my yeah. pregnancy has gifted me this awareness. I bet it did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when we had, when I had her, um, she was in the NICU for 15 days and prior to being in that hospital in that moment, I didn't know what the NICU was. I didn't know that, mm-hmm. that babies had to potentially go through this you know, life-saving process Mm -hmm. in order to get help, to get assistance. Um, I always visualize, you know, the home birth, the like happy birthing flowers and meditation and breathing and, you know, like that whole vibe. That was what I was giving myself. But uh, it's really funny because I've up until the moment, like days before I had her, I was like, you know, I can see her as a toddler, but I can't see my birth. Like I I'm very, I can see a lot about my path and my life. And I was like, they're not letting me see the birth. I don't know why they're not letting me see the birth. And I get it. Had they let me see the birth? Oh my God. I would have freaked out. Yes. Yeah. They're protecting you. Yeah. Um, so that was a 
whole experience in itself and and motherhood as you know is like a whole other <laughs> a whole other opportunity to level up superwoman super mom wonder woman all of the above <laughs> yeah a whole other opportunity to level up i mean honestly she holds me accountable i know that right now she's not talking yet but the moment that she talks i know i'm gonna have to watch what i say oh, yeah. i know yeah like i'm already mindful of what i how i how i am like what energy i'm giving off um but I feel like she has really grounded my purpose in this life, in this body as Angie. So I'm, I'm so grateful. I can, I, I can see it through, through the pictures and everything. Like, I don't know, it's a natural gift. Like when I see somebody, I can see where they're at just by looking at a picture, you know? And I said to myself, wow, Angie got to experience, you know, the baby coming out of her and holding a piece of her, you know what I mean? A piece of your child that is a part of you. And I don't know, when I gave birth with, uh, with my first birth, there were twins. I cried, you know, and it was cesarean because I wanted my babies to come out the canal. You know what I mean? I wanted to, to, to say that they came out natural, you know, from there. And the doctors were so against me having natural birth where I felt like the doctor, like, um, so you know how people say you could speak life into somebody, you could speak death into somebody, right? Well, I yeah. felt like the doctor was speaking negative on this birth. And then I switched from him because he kept saying, no, you need a cesarean. You're having twins. You can, you, you can lose your life and this and that. And then I found an Asian doctor that was like, okay, well, I'm willing to let you have what you want, you know? And, um, and I told him, I was like, my ancestors before me and my family before me had twins way before doctors exist in Mexico and Louisiana. I know I can give birth in a hospital with twins, you know? And I felt like he just like whammy, whammy me. I don't even know the word to use, but, um, I felt like he blocked, you know, blocked what, what I envisioned because he kept putting that in the, in the universe and, so the, my doctor ended up going on vacation and that other doctor came in. And at that time, I didn't know about energy, right? You know, I didn't know about energy and how words are powerful. I could have just said, I don't want you touching me. I don't want you in this room. I will reschedule, right? But I didn't, you know, but I, that's when I knew what energy was and how powerful people can, words can be. And so when he was doing the ultrasound, he says, he, this is what he did. <laughs> you have to have a cesarean for what? And then he responds because one of your children are breached, but he was so happy and laughing about it. And I was like inside crying. I couldn't even be angry because I was vulnerable when you're pregnant. It's like, you're not the same person. It's so weird. Yeah. And I cry. And, um, and so I did the hypnosis thing to kind of like push the baby back. That didn't work. The lady was like, Raina, your mind is so strong. And I'm all like, but I, I want you to hypnotize me. She was like, no, you're too strong. Like you're not even, you don't even believe I can do this for you, you know? Mm -hmm. And I spent the money and she never turned. And so Omara stayed breach. So I had to have a cesarean and that was the like, I don't like to scare moms, but for me, it was the most scariest thing ever, you know? Why? Um, because they're cutting you and you can't feel the pain, but you can feel it. And then, then they're moving you, but you're like a, a head. Only the head can move, but everything else is like, just like, like kind of like, I don't know, not alive. Paralyzed. <laughs> Yeah, paralyzed. And once you're paralyzed, you can't feel anything, just your head. And when the first baby come out, it's like they pull you, pull it over the whatever, the little tarp or whatever it is. And you see the baby and you can't really get that experience of the legs open and the baby coming to you. You're like, you can't even move. You're just, I see the baby She's crying and I'm like, God, thank you for giving me a healthy baby. No, I think Omar was born first. Sorry. So Omar came up and then Omara came up and I couldn't move. And then you can just hear them like talking and pulling and tugging. And it was just freaky. And I just remember like 
I got so nauseous that I started to vomit. So I had to move my head to the left. Oh and gosh. then they gave me some kind of medicine through a mask to calm me down. And so I was like, oh God, it was scary. But then when I had Gigi, she was my only single birth. You know, Gigi came. I knew that they were going to do the cesarean because I got pregnant too soon. But she was okay. But I almost hemorrhaged. Well, no, I did hemorrhage, you know, um, and I thought, you know, when they were, they were so scared, they were scaring me. And I had told my husband, please get my mom and my dad, because if I'm going to die, I need to see my parents. Like, you know, I don't want to cross over without seeing them. So then my parents came and my mom held my hand and she was like, baby, your family ain't gonna, you know, God or your family is not going to let you do cross over because your children mean everything to you. And then they helped me. I was fine. And then when I got, I had my last pregnancy, the, the third pregnancy, there were twins and, um, it was, it wasn't that bad, I guess, because I've already experienced, <laughs> you know, the first, the second cesarean, yeah. the third cesarean was a piece of cake. But when that doctor looked at me and said, Miss Carrillo, this is your second set of twins. Do you want to tie your tubes? I was like, hell yes. <laughs> I said, if I get pregnant after this, that's because God is saying, I'm not done with you, Raina. You know what I mean? But until then, I'm like, no, God, I can't. I, I oh my gosh, like I I can't. Like, oh my gosh, I can't. This is this is too much for me, you know. So motherhood is is whoo, it's a it's a journey. <laughs> it's a hell of a journey. It really yeah. is. But I'm truly blessed because I feel like a goddess, you know what I mean? Like I bring mm -hmm. on earth. And um, my mentor is teaching me how to let my children be who they are, not for me to be so controlling. You know what I mean? So I'm learning a lot in the process. And it just seems like even though I've had, you know, five children total, I'm still a new mom because I learn things every day with each kid. You know, now my twins are 12. No, they're 11. And then Gigi is eight. And then now my babies are three. So it's like, I'm still learning, you know, and it's just interesting. So now I'm just thinking like, okay, the next step is what one day they become older. They give me grandkids and I become a grandma, you know, that's good. That's another, no, a whole nother future chapter. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I hear being a grandma is like such a blessing. Yeah. yeah that's so different. beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say you love different when you're a grandma. <laughs> The other day I was driving home from the gym and I had, so I, I'm telling you, I time travel all the time. So I'm, I'm like yeah. in this present moment, I had this moment where I was driving, but I was in a picture looking at my grandchildren, looking at me. Wow. Yeah. It was three of them. It was two boys and a girl and they were talking about me. And, <laughs> and it, it was just one of those moments where it's like, it's our legacy and our kids are a legacy. Yes, they are a legacy. Yes, they are. Yes, yes, yes. So that's amazing. Motherhood is interesting, but it's amazing. It's beautiful. And so what's new for 2022, Angie? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. It's like so many of us had so many intentions for 2020 and then 2020 happened, right? Yes. But a lot, a lot of us went inward. Um, so much growth. I have, <laughs> I feel, I have this vision that I'm just like spreading my wings and flying. That's right. And I, like you, Raina, I feel like 2022 is going to be such a pivotal year for us and such a, mm -hmm. a monumental year for us. You know, I think that I can have these projections, but I, I'm open to God's blessings. I'm open to miracles. I'm open to receive. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have the intention of um, launching a, a self love. I have so I have a mentorship. It's called Self Mastery Through Self Love, and I've been doing this uh, time and time again for the last couple of years. And I feel like it's time that I can expand that ability for people to dive into that self love through self mastery experience through an online course. That's something I'm going to be launching and. Um, I, I want to say the beginning of March and, um, you know, through this mentorship, you activate your awareness of your goddess self, um, your warrior self, your higher self, your ancestors, your guides, all of what I know since I was a child, just really honing in on that and becoming activating those awarenesses. 
um, building more purpose, diving into your passions and whatnot. So that's what's in the horizon, short term, long term, <laughs> long term. Um, honestly, sky's the limit. I don't want to say because I feel like I feel like I'm open to miracles, and I feel like whatever I put, it's going to be bigger than that. So yes, it will. Yes, it will definitely. And that's why I asked for 2022 because I know. Just looking at y'all was like, she has something. <laughs> mm, she Thank has something you. in the works. I could see it. <laughs> so that's what it is. Self-love mentorship, right? Yeah, it's, it's um, a course. Um, people can, will be able to study it. And um, it's funny because I don't know um, what you've heard of, of plant medicine, ayahuasca in particular. I don't know where your stance is with that. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard of, I've heard of it before. Um, but I've never, um, like experienced it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But go ahead and share that. Yeah. So years ago, I want to say about four years ago, I was in ceremony and I had this experience. And I don't know if I've shared this with you in the previous episode that we did together where, um, I'm sitting Mind you, remember I told you how every time I would drink, I'd have these moments of, I don't want to be in my body. I don't want to be on yes. this planet. Um, I, in that moment of being in that plant ceremony, ayahuasca ceremony, I, my body reminded me of all the times I had rejected it, reminded me of all the times I didn't want to be in it, all the times that I, I just devalued it and I felt its pain I felt its rejection it's almost like rejecting a child like I don't want you I don't love you get away blah 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 you know I mean yeah. imagine how that child would feel so that's how my body was mourning was like almost like I I, I did everything for you to be here in this moment and yeah. you don't want me and so um I had to come to terms with that. Like, Oh my God, I can't believe I was this way to myself. I would never be that way to anyone else. Um, and in that moment, in that healing, that hurt and everything after, you know, the revelation of like, and you got to love yourself. You got to really love yourself. You got to deeply love yourself. You got to accept all aspects of you. You got to just own all aspects of you. Um, I had this revelation that I was to create the self-love course and that was four mm -hmm. years ago. And I was always like, I'll do it next, you know, in the next six months in the next <laughs> year. And, um, I just feel like there has been so much growth and expansion for me as, as a person, as a, as a woman, as a mom, that it's like, Oh, that's why these four years had to pass for me to integrate that information and truly live it, truly embody it to then, um, serve it, share it from that place. So that's, that's a story of how the self-love through self-mastery course is coming to life. When you did that, was it a tea? Cause I know for the native Americans, they do peyote and then it brings yeah. them into the spiritual world. So what you did was a tea, correct? Yeah, it's similar. It, um, it's, I don't, it's a brew. It's a brew. It's not served warm. It's served cool. It tastes like prune juice. Mm. <laughs> yeah it tastes like prune like a like a very salty prune juice and when you went through that spiritual awakening were you in a pitch black place or how was that uh -huh. and so i'm only I, sharing the, and i'm only asking because i just remember now um i just interviewed somebody named daisy and she shared that experience with me and she said uh -huh. she was in a pitch black area like place and it was a woman I forgot what they call her but it was a woman there and she you know kind of shared about that like you know things that she had to deal with and her spiritual journey but I forgot the lady's name she used her name but that's why I was saying were you in a pitch black place because I know okay. she was yeah no you know um I'm gonna try to make this as concise and and as quick as I can but so I, when I left this religion, Santeria, I, again, crowned daughter of Oshun, I almost felt like I had turned my back, but then I knew that she's still a part of me. I knew she's my mother. Like she's my love. Like she's my guide. You know, she walks in front of me. I walk behind her, like the works. I had not communed with her when I sat in ceremony the first time. And I was guided there because I was never 
one to take anything to experience anything. Like I had always been connected to the spirit world naturally. Like I don't need to take anything. Mm-hmm. Mind you, my, I don't know. I don't, I'm sure I shared this with you, Raina, but my father died from a heroin overdose. So coming yes, from that I background, I didn't want to take anything and lose control. Yes. In that sense. So when the opportunity came up, I, and it, I felt like, okay, this is time. Um, I felt divinely led there to experience. Now, my experiences with ayahuasca ceremony have been nothing but abundant and beautiful. I mean, from a Moroccan home in the Hollywood Hills to a beautiful home in Malibu Hills to a beautiful mansion in North Hollywood. You know what I mean? Like beautiful, extravagant, abundant places with people that are so pure, I mean, the people wow. holding space um, and that were just teachers by simply being. Um, so I wanted to share that because when I first sat in ceremony and I, I've only sat with this group of people, they started singing um, Brazilian music to the Orishas. So mm-hmm. there's a, so as I'm sitting there, this song to Oshun comes up and to Shango and to Yamaya and I'm like, wait a minute, but it's from a different vibration. Yes, It's a more melodic connected to the earth, connected to the elements of the earth vibration. And I'm like, they brought me here. She brought me here to the meet again. That, the person that you say, oh, shoot. Kind of back, right? Yeah. Oh, oh sure. She brought me here oh, wow. to, to meet again, to commune again. So I'm not surprised that my experience of sitting in ceremony were, to, were in these beautiful, abundant, wow. you know, luxurious places. So that's mm-hmm. been my experience with the medicine. Yeah, my friend, she, she I, there, there's a lot of things that I haven't shared with her because, you know, God will tell me like, you can or you cannot share, you know? And I know why she was in a pitch dark place, you know? She, there's a lot of things that she has to deal with. And, but she said she was in the wilderness, like somewhere far away. I don't know if it was Mexico or n- South America, but she was like in the wilderness, you know? with the uh, shaman but she says shaman. They, shaman but they don't like to use that word they just say medicine man you know mm-hmm. and, my, my um, person didn't want to use that word either they don't, they yeah. don't call themselves shaman. Mm-hmm. yes and um and so it was interesting you know how she was ex- uh, you know uh, sharing that that experience um but I knew that it was interesting because it's like my my ways is like even though I was born and raised catholic the Virgin Mary came to me twice uh, in two incidents when I should have been murdered. The first time was in 97. I, that was a spiritual awakening that changed me. And then one year before my wedding, um, because in, in the Creole culture, they say that when you die close to your date of birth, it's meant for you to cross over. And my birthday is January 10th. And it was Christmas Eve when the bullets came through that truck and only got shot in the back of the leg. And when we crashed, we crashed into a church and it was the Virgin Mary, the Guadalupe, you know, a picture. And I was just like, Oh my God, here she goes again. You know? So for me, I feel like she's like my angel, you know? And, um, and so when you become Christian, they don't tell you not to, you know, to, to, pray to the Virgin Mary, they just feel like, you know, God is the one, you know, Jesus is the one and nobody above them. But I have not a real battle because I'm a spiritual person. You know, I choose to be Christian now for, it makes me feel different and it's helping me become a better person. But I feel for me, like my soul is my soul. And even though I'm a Christian, I still put the Virgin Mary in a high place, not higher than God, the creator or his son, Jesus, but I put her in a high place because when I went through that spiritual awakening, when I was almost shot in the head, it could have been Jesus that appeared, but he Mm -hmm. did it. Um, It could have been any other person that appeared according, you know, from the Bible that they call saints, but it was her. And so then when that second incident happened, it was her. And so I just felt like me and her, we have something going on that I, you know, that I need to explore maybe in hypnosis, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but, but I love that woman. I really do. Like, I really love that woman and she has showed up for, to, for me spiritually. You know what I mean? So I always tell people like, even though I'm a Christian, I never judge a person. Like I know people that I've sit down with and I'm like, God is showing me she's a witch. 
you know, and most people would be like, oh, no, don't hang around those type of people and that. No, my faith in God is so strong that uh, I don't fear. I'm I am a human. She is a human or they're a human. And this is their thing. And this is my thing. And we come to a respect level. You know what I mean? And uh, that's why a lot of people say, like, Raina, you're just such a free spirit. You know, and I'm like, yeah, because. I don't pass judgment on nobody. I love them unconditional. I love them for who they are. As long as they're kind to me, I don't have a problem. You know, they're going to see Jesus through me, through what I say or how I do things. You know what I mean? But I don't have to change anybody, you know? And so it's just an interesting journey. (laughs) I love that you're open and I love that you share how you acknowledge, you know, the Virgin Mary as one of your your guides, I would say your spirit guides, your angels. Um, I too, you know, I listen to church. I've, I've, I'm, I actually have the Bible next to me because I dive into the Psalms and, and oh, every other book. Nice. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's really important to ground in whatever makes you feel, um, connected, you know, to yourself, yes. to God, to, to that love vibration, that love energy and mm-hmm. centered. I think of uh, spiritual hygiene is so important. Prayer is so important. Oh yeah. Prayer is so powerful. Prayer is so powerful. Like it's powerful. Like, man, like I I felt like you when I was a kid, like I I remember telling God, like, I want to go back home. (laughs) I was a little kid talking about, I want to go back home. Like this is not what I signed up for. (laughs) After after years, like freaking what, I think it was in my late twenties when I actually said, I embrace this body. I embrace Raina, like, you know, good or bad. Like my life experience is here for me to help others that have been through it too, because people are going to tell you like, you know, an example, like being molested as a child, um, a young girl will look at me and be like, I got molested by my father. And I'm just like, Whoa, that's super deep. Cause that's, I've never experienced that but it's still a loved one. It's still a family member, you know? And they're looking at me like, you don't know what that is. You don't know how it feels. And then when you kind of open up a little bit through sessions, then they realize like, wow, like Raina, because of you, I was able to heal and to understand that forgiving my father is okay because it's not about my father. It's about me. And I would always tell the kids, like, you know, you're blocking your blessings. You know what I mean? Like you're holding on to this anger and resentment and you're wondering why you're not receiving all this amazing stuff coming in because it's an energy that piles up that is not a good energy. And so you're attracting all these negative men in your life. You know what I mean? And you're you're attracting these other lost women that are similar to you. And now you're wrapped up in this gang world. Now you want, now you're a stripper. You know what I mean? Now you're, now you're going through this. Now you're a mom. Now you're pregnant. And now this is your shift. This is your change. Now we are not our parents, you know, and it's crazy. Cause it's like, I take a little bit of my little bachelor's degree in sociology and psychology, and I mix it up with my personal life experience and a little bit of Bible, which I always tell people, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. (laughs) And I just take it all together and help these kids heal. (laughs) That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful to have someone to tell you. That is so beautiful. And you're right because, um, we, 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 every day is a choice, but we, we repeat the patterns until we realize I have yes. the choice. I have the power. I have the ability. Yes. Thank you for what you're doing. Oh, thank you, Angie, for being on purpose and passion. And, and we celebrate you for being an awesome woman and, and a healer and, and helping individuals, you know, uh, find themselves, um, their purpose, you know what I mean? Their passion, um, understanding what has happened from the past and how they can utilize that and take power, you know, take power in who they are and their truth. And so is there a word, anything you want to say to the viewers before we close out? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, what do I want to say? Hmm. I, you know, I always say do more of what makes you happy, truly happy and fulfilled inside what makes you smile or brings you joy. That is, that's your true North is, is that's what, that will help you gauge what is not for you. 
it won't feel like joy. It won't, it won't put a smile on your face. So I guess use that as your radar. Thank you so much, Angie. This is Rainer Carrillo with Purpose and Passion signing out. Until then, go follow Angie at Inspired with Angie on IG. Have a blessed day. Until then, see you later. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.